In this video, we're going to discuss several revenue synergies that can be generated from mergers and acquisitions. And the first is increased pricing power. So when you have a horizontal merger, which is a merger of two competitors, one competitor is essentially being wiped out, so the combined firm might be able to increase price. Let me give you an example. Let's say we've got a small town with two hotels. We've got Hotel A and Hotel B, and they are the only hotels in that town, and they decide that they are going to merge and become one hotel. So now, basically, they are not going to get into a price war. You're not going to have a price war here. Pre-merger, if, if, if uh, Hotel A decided they were going to increase price, everybody might go to Hotel B. But now they basically have, kind of have a monopoly. Okay, so now if you're in a situation where there's a Hotel C, a Hotel D, a Hotel E, then obviously you're not going to have as much ability to increase price. Now, another revenue synergy would be if there's some kind of specific expertise or a strength that one of the firms has and that it could then share with the other firm. Or ideally, they'd each have different benefits that they can combine with each other. So let's say that you have one of the companies that was really, really good at marketing. So if we've got company A and we got company B, company A is great at marketing, company B is better at research and development. Then company A can teach basically their marketing tricks and, and help uh, B, better position B's uh, products in the marketplace. Okay? And then B, in turn, could use their scientists or whoever's doing their R&D to provide additional insights to company A. So they're basically sharing each other's uh, strengths. So, you know, my, my, weak, my weakness is your strength and, and vice versa. And so we're, we're helping each other. Now, a real life example of this, uh, when Procter & Gamble, the consumer products company and Gillette, when they, when they had a merger, so basically, among other things, Procter & Gamble, uh, they're really great at building brands, but specifically, they're also really great at doing in-depth ethnographic research. And so one of the things they did, for example, was that they had Gillette. So they went to Gillette and said, listen, you really going to have uh, your, your team go and live with the people who are going to be using the products and so forth. For example, uh, Gillette was interested in trying to get more market share in India. And so Procter & Gamble basically had Gillette go and some of their scientists go and basically live alongside some of the consumers, some of the men that they were going to be trying to uh, pitch their, their razors to. And so the Gillette scientists at first did not really think this was a great idea. So, hey, we, we know how to sell, uh, you know, what, what kind of features people want with razor blades and so forth. But when they went and lived alongside the people in India, they found that, for example, a lot of the men that they were targeting uh, shaved with cold water. And so one of the things that they, the men were concerned about was like the, the hair and so, you know, that had been shaved, uh, getting caught up in the blades and creating problems and, and clogging of the razor blades. And so they wouldn't have the Gillette scientists later said, you know what, we wouldn't have had this insight if, if Procter and Gamble had not encouraged us to do this kind of in-depth uh, research. Now, Gillette brought other things to the table, for example, uh, they were really good at setting up in-store in, in displays of their products. And so they could, in turn, share knowledge in their expertise with Procter & Gamble. So each company is benefiting from each other, and they can end up having more revenue. So if you take comp company A and company B and just add them together, and you say, well, they'll just have their combined revenue. But remember, the whole idea between behind synergies is 1 plus 1 equals more than two, it's equal three or four or something like that. So they're basically sharing this expertise. So they're having a higher combined revenue than if the two firms have been operated independently. Now, another type of synergy with respect to revenue, you gain access to new market markets, particularly if you're trying to get into another country. Maybe you do business in a, in a country that's not growing uh, very much and you want to get into a high growth market in another country. So if you were to acquire a firm in that high growth country, now you have access to, to new markets to, to pitch your products. Also, different sales channels and I'll give you an example. Sometimes people acquire a firm, uh, they just want the customer list, right? You acquire, and, and so let me give you a simple example of that. Let's say you had one company uh, that made tents, and then you had another company that made sleeping bags. If they were to merge, here's how this, this notion of something as simple as a customer list could come in handy. So let's say this company with tents, they say, you know what? Now that we have the customer list of this company that has been selling sleeping bags to people, might people who are buying a sleeping bag also might be interested in buying a tent? 
Yes, right? Yes, these are kind of complimentary products. So the tent company, they gain access to this customer list of sleeping bags, and they can pitch them their tents. Now, are there other additional new channels and new ways to sell your products? Uh, I'll give you an example, a real-life example, with Amazon, uh, when they acquired the grocery chain Whole Foods. So some things that you saw was Amazon began selling some of their devices like Kindles and stuff in the Whole Foods stores. Okay, so now Amazon had a new way to actually sell their devices in person instead of just on their website. Uh, Amazon also put lockers in Whole Foods. How would having an Amazon locker uh, basically, uh, you know, how would that lead to increased revenue generation? Well, what if the people, they go to pick up their package uh, from the Amazon locker, and then they happen to be in Whole Foods and say, you know what, I'm going to buy some groceries here. Maybe they would have went to a different grocery store before, but now because of the Amazon locker, they're going to spend money at Whole Foods. So again, we have generated additional revenue from the combination of these firms. Also, uh, basically, when Amazon uh, acquired Whole Foods, then Whole Foods shoppers, if they were a member of Amazon Prime, then they could get a discount on their purchases at Whole Foods. So that might incentivize people who already have a Prime membership to buy even more at Whole Foods. Or it might be that you have some people who are Whole Foods shoppers who are not members of Amazon Prime and now decide to get a Prime membership, which you have to pay for that. And so that's going to generate increased revenue. So basically, there's just a number of different ways that by combining Firm A and Firm B, you get more revenue in total for the combined firm than you would have had if you just had firm A and firm B operated independently.